Godzai is the largest lake of the Seven Kingdoms, located south of the Trident and west of the King's Road in the Southern Riverlands. In the summer, when it's warm, the waters are blue and green and glimmer in the sunlight, but during the harsh winters it resembles cold still and from time to time freezes over. The Godzai is said to have an odd current when compared to a normal lake and particularly hungry fish, making it a bountiful fishing spot. The Great Castle Harren Hall and its town, Harren's Town, sits aside the God's Eye's northern shore, whilst an unnamed town is along the southern shore. Some speculate the lake's tactical and commanding position, as well as the mystery that surrounds it, is why Harren chose its banks as the location for his doomed castle. At its centre is a lone island, the Isle of Faces, which is where the pact between the children of the forest and the first men was created black swans living in its vicinity. The landscape near the great castle is a patchwork of rolling hills, meandering streams and sunlit fields, while further south it is forested. The godsite feeds an unnamed river that flows south towards the Blackwater Rush. The whole fast of Byerswhite is south of the lake and east of the river. The pact between the first men and the children of the forest was signed on the Isle of Faces in the middle of the godsite and the order of the green men were formed to protect the weirwoods on the island. These weirwoods still stand today. Many believe an enclave of children of the forest do exist on the isle. As a result, singers and storytellers tell tales of the green king of the godsite. When the Andals swept through the Riverlands during their invasion, they were unable to conquer the Isle of Faces. Rivermen occasionally sail across the God's Eye to the Isle of Faces as a rite of passage, but they are always driven away by winds or flocks of ravens. Harren Hall, king of the Isles and River, constructed Harren Hall on the northern shore of the God's Eye. During Aegon's conquest, the Battle of the Reeds and the Wailing Willows were fought along the southern shore of the lake. Two sons of Harren the Black were slain by Beleriand on the lake while they were returning to Harren Hall on longboats. King Aegon Targaryen conquered the region through the burning of Harren Hall. Aegon then marched from his campsite beside the God's Eye to face the remaining kings. Later, Prince Aegon Targaryen, the Conqueror's grandson, also known as Aegon the Uncrowned, the son and heir of King Aenys Targaryen, was slain by his uncle Maegor in the battle beneath the God's Eye in 43 AC, when Maegor had usurped the throne from his young nephew after the death of Aenys. Later still, during the Dance of Dragons, the battle by the lake shore was fought along the western shore of the God's Eye, while the Butcher's Ball occurred south of the lake. Aemond and Daemon Targaryen and their dragons Vhagar and Caraxes fought to the death in the battle above the God's Eye, a tale that would become stuff of legend and immortalised the two in history. Aemond's body was found years later, the Valerian still saw Dark Sister in his eye socket, although Prince Daemon's remains were never found, leading to rumour he may have somehow survived the battle. Sedanquin the Tall and Prince Aegon Targaryen used a nearby ferry to cross to the wedding tourney at White Walls. The castle was later destroyed in the aftermath of the Second Blackfyre Rebellion. Later, Lord Walter Wendt's great tourney at Harren Hall was hosted along the northern shore of the lake. We get to see a fair amount of the God's Eye in the book series, due to the War of the Five Kings and the death around the Riverlands. Due to the War of Five Kings and the death around the Riverlands, it's reported that huge wolf packs have become bolder than ever, especially near the God's Eye, making travel through this area even more unsafe than it already was. Yorin, a wanderer at the Night's Watch, brings his recruits, including a disguised Arya Stark, to an abandoned town on the southern shore of the God's Eye, where they are set upon by the Westermen, led by Sir Armory Lodge, with only a few surviving and escaping into the woods. Trying to avoid the men-at-arms, Arya observes that all the settlements they pass, whether it be villages or castles, have been burned to the ground by Lannisters. She and Gendry are eventually captured by the mountain's men at the village by the God's Eye and taken to Harren Hall. Mira Reed also tells Bran Stark the story of the Knight of the Laughing Tree, which includes a Cranog man who travelled to the Isle of Faces within the God's Eye, but she does not get much detail on what happened. Now the Isle of Faces is maybe the most interesting part of the lake. The sacred island sits in the middle of the lake. Is one of the few known locations of, of weirwood trees still left in the south of Westeros, where most of the others have been cut down and burned by the Andals. During the ancient war with the First Men, the children of the forest may have used the Hammer of the Waters from this island to break the Armour Dawn, cutting Westeros off from Essos. At the end of the Dawn Age, following many centuries of fighting between them, the Isle is where the First Men and the children signed the pact, ending the war against each other. In celebration, Every weirwood on the island was given a face so that the gods would witness the pact. With the signing of the pact, the Order of the Green Men was formed. 
to tend to the last remaining weirwoods in the south. The Andals failed to conquer the Green Men. Some masters believe that the children of the forest survive on the isle. Whether the Green Men still survive as well is not clear, but some foolhardy young river lords as a rite of passage take a boat to the isle, catching sight of them before winds rise up or a flock of ravens drives them away. These tales claim the Green Men are horned and have dark green skin, which is probably a corruption of the truth, which is the Green Men wore green garments and horned headdresses. It is also rumoured that Sir Adam Valarian, determined to prove that not all bastards need to be turned cloaks, visited the Isle of Faces on his dragon, Sea Smoke. Singers say Sir Adam had flown from King's Landing to the God's Eye, where he landed on the Sacred Isle and took counsel with the Green Men. Mira Reed later claims her father, Howland Reed, visited the Isle of Faces during the tourney of Harrenhal. Out of all the cases of people claiming to visit the Isle, this one is the most likely. Much to Bran Stark's disbelief. The God's Eye and the Isle of Faces are fascinating parts of the history and lore of Westeros, and in my view, I think they will have some role to play in the story to come. It's a shame we never really got to see a real look at them in the TV show, but hopefully that will change with House of the Dragon. What are your theories about the God's Eye and the Isle of Faces? Do you think anything mysterious is going on? 